So at this point, we've learned all of the formulas for this chapter that are on your formula sheet that you'll be able to use on the upcoming test. So notice how all of these formulas from the next few chapters are not labeled. They don't tell you what they're for. They're just here to jog your memory to make sure you know you're getting them right. But you still need to know what the formulas mean without them being explained here. So uh, you should know that this is our, you know, sim not simple compounded continuously interest formula. This is our growth and decay formula, which looks a lot like our simple compounded continuously interest formula. I don't know why I keep saying simple, because simple is not compounded. So. And then this is our regular compounded interest formula. And of course, it doesn't tell you what the variables mean, so you would need to know that. So this formula sheet is simply just to verify that you've got those formulas right, but you still need to know a lot about them that's memorized in addition to having this sheet to refer to. Perhaps that makes sense. Okay, let's do another example. This one's a decay problem having to do with dating with radioactive isotopes. So iodine-131 is a commonly used radioactive isotope that helps detect how well the thyroid is functioning. Oh, this isn't a carbon dating one. This is a medical related one. Iodine-131 decays exponentially, and after approximately eight days, only one half of the original amount remains. If five grams of iodine-131 is present initially, find a function that gives the amount of iodine-131 in grams t numbers of days later. So I know we just love story problems. So, uh, Let's just highlight important stuff. Problem solving is important. The fact that it's called iodine-131, that's a number that doesn't really matter. We've got eight days that we're dealing with here. We've got five grams. Um, and we've got half of the original amount happening here. We've got uh, our time is in days, right? So we've got a time of eight days. And in that eight days, sorry, I don't like my hand or anything. So, um, in that eight days, half of the original amount remains. So with right radioactive isotopes and decay, this is called half-life. So kind of explains it in a different way than that. Half of the original amount remains. We officially call that half-life. Half of the radioactive isotope remains because half of it has decayed in eight days. All right. Um, if five grams is present initially, so let's write down our initial amount is five grams. Um, looks like, again, we're just writing a formula, so we're not actually going to use it to solve anything. We're just writing a formula that we can use to solve stuff, right? And t is going to be in days. Okay, so let's write down our formula. So a as a function of t is our initial amount e to the kt. So what we really need to find here is k. Find k to get the formula. So we need to plug in any variables we can other than k so that we can solve for k. And then when we're writing the actual formula, our function notation a of t is going to be at the beginning. And then k will be replaced with the actual number that we found, right? Just like we did in example four. Okay, so we know that the amount after eight days is half. So the amount in eight days is half the original amount, so 2.5, right? And the amount that we started with was 5. We're trying to find k, and this happened in 8 days, so our t value is going to be in days. So the k value that we find is going to be based on a t value of days. So here's another one of those situations where you don't actually need to know the amounts. Like, we didn't need to take 5 and split it in half to get 2.5. We didn't even need to know the five. 
We just need to know, well, we do need the 5 when we're doing our final formula because we'll need the 5 right there. But to find k, we don't really need the 5. We just need to know that it's half. It's the half of k because we do this isolation of the exponential part of things, and what do we get over here? We get a 1 half. Just like when we were doubling, we got two. When we were tripling, we got three. And now we're finding, we're using the half-life, so we're getting half. Okay. So we have one half equals e to the 8k. After you've done enough of these, you don't even really need to write out all these steps. Oh, I don't know why I just wrote a three instead of a two. Let's redo that one. Because you're just going to get so the hang of this, like... Just, this is what the process is. We take the log of both sides, we move this to the front, this turns into 1. So we end up with the natural log of 1 half is 8k, because we move it to the front and this turns into 1, so it's 8k times 1, which is just 8k. And so that means k is just going to be the natural log of 1 half, or 0.5, if you'd rather not have a fraction, divided by 8. That's k. So anytime you're doing a half-life, it's always going to be natural log one-half divided by the half-life. That's just always going to happen. It's kind of like you've made your own little formula. But if you don't want to memorize that little formula, then just make sure you know the process to get there. Okay, we have what we need for the formula we're trying to write. So A is a function of T for an initial amount of 5 grams e to the kt. So if we want to leave this as exact, we would do natural log 0.5 divided by 8 times t. And t is in days and the amount is in grams. So if you wanted to explain your formula, it would be grams after t number of days. It's always good to know the context of your formula, right? Now again, we could have found a decimal for this and put that in there so that it's, you know, maybe a little prettier, a little bit less busy, but I like the idea of keeping my k value exact. Now just out of curiosity, what is this approximate value? Because this is dk. This should be a negative k value. Let's see if that works out. So natural log of 0.5 divided by 8, and we got a negative k value. So negative 0 0.0866. Why did the assets turn so weird? Sometimes I don't understand the lag in my computer and how it affects everything. <laughs> okay, so anyway, negative k value, just as expected, because it is dk this is the exact value that you could just plug into a problem to solve it.